Okay, as we uh, take a look back at 2022 and forward to 2023, we like to check in with uh, some of our regular guests from over the year. David Phillips joining us now, Senior Climatologist for Environment Canada. And, uh, and, and David, it's been quite a year for weather events. Uh, I, I guess we can say that every year. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I know that you, uh, you never get bored at your job because there's always something new and weather obviously is always changing. Do you find it a, a, a career that you're attracted to because of that? It's never the same? Oh, that's so right, Lisa. You know, of course, I was born in Windsor and raised in Windsor, so I get that weather kind of interest, honestly. I mean, my mother was always scared skinny about, about tornadoes, and, and every time there was a thunderstorm, my gosh, we'd, we'd head to the basement. And, you know, you get those warnings from Detroit and also from Windsor, and, hey, my gosh, it was just a, a kind of a, almost an example of what everything could happen. You had winter, you had, of course, some of the most powerful uh, thunderstorms and tornadoes. I mean, it's the lightning capital of Canada. So, yeah. hey, I, to be a weather weenie, I think is easy uh, to be uh, from the Windsor area. Yeah. Do you think that influenced you, David, on, on what you chose to do as a career and became like, you know, the weather specialist that you are living in an area where we had so much unique weather? And with the influence of uh, media from the States, we were inundated with, you know, reports on TV, the scrolls at the bottom of the screen yeah. and, and all the great weather people that we had over there. Well, you know, Mike, I, I, I'd like to be honest and say, yes, it did. But, hey, I didn't have instruments in my backyard in Riverside where I lived. You know, I mean, I remember Soupy Sales and uh, yeah. uh, some of the other characters <laughs> who, who were on uh, television and, uh, and radio. And, hey, I, um, I, I just think because it was every day was different. I mean, you couldn't set your watch to the weather in, uh, in Windsor because everything was, you know, your are the weather out your backyard was different than your front yard. So I think that sort of, uh, 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 but then I got a job with Environment Canada doing research on the Great Lakes and, and this passion for weather just sort of oozed from that. And, and, uh, and I'm of course always partial to Windsor. I always try to brag about the kind of Windsor weather in Windsor. And, uh, and you know, on these top 10 weather stories though, I, I kind of wish that Windsor wasn't included because this is the worst stress list, not the best stress list. I mean, sometimes the, the good ideal weather, which I know that you have so much of, hey, you are the uh, the uh, greatest, uh, the more growing degree days in Windsor than yep. any other. And I think what should be on your bumper sticker, guys, I say this all the time, is you have the best falls in Canada. I mean, come on. And of course, yes. people are retiring to Windsor because they've, they've, they've got a sense of, not only maybe prices are a little lower than elsewhere, but they know the weather is gorgeous. They don't want to go to Victoria or, or places like that. They want to go to Windsor in Ontario. And so I think you have, it's a magical place. And I think the weather is, uh, hey, it can be cruel at times, but often it is really beautiful. And it's certainly less winter-like than you see in other parts of um, of Ontario. Yeah, we are, we're certainly lucky that way, for sure. I don't know that we'll have time to go over all of the top 10 no. from 2022. What stands out to you, David, um, from 2022 as far as weather events? Well, I think there were a number of wind events. We heard about Fiona. It made number one to, on mm -hmm. the list uh, in terms of the probably the most powerful storm ever in Canada. And we measure that guy by the, guys by the central pressure. The lower that pressure is, the more powerful the storm. We've never seen a winter, fall, spring, or summer storm that had a lower pressure than this one. And it was probably the most um, expensive uh, hurricane in Canadian history. It wasn't a killer like other ones, but it really um, it really had a lot of elements to it. It had been a very quiet season. My gosh, people were wondering, where are the hurricanes? That last week in September, we had, in fact, the million-dollar Fiona and the billion-dollar Ian just absolutely took its number on um, on North on North America. So that was a big a big story. I think the other one that really kind of Windsor was sort of on the sidelines of it, but not Sarnia, was the uh, Dereco. You never heard of that word before. I mean, that was on that. No, that's the, that's the first I've heard of this one. Exactly, exactly. And that Dereco it comes from the Spanish meaning uh, forward moving, and it's just the fact that these very strong downburst winds came out of this system. And just like, like water coming from the faucet squirted along the bottom of the sink and all these winds blowing in the same direction across with the motion of the storm, and it just mowed down trees all over the place. And it had tornadoes, it had 
wind, I mean, rain and, and hail, but it was the powerful winds. And it was a billion dollar hit. I mean, there were a million insurance claims, but a billion dollars in total amounts of the most expensive storm in Canada this year. But guys, you know, what value do you put on a tree? A tree like in, in Harrow that would provide you with shade and comfort and, and beauty that's lost forever. I mean, it's grandma's uh, place where she had a hammock strung from one pole to the other. So I, I, I think it's, it's uh, you can count the insurance losses, but you can't uh, measure that loss of, uh, of valuable uh, trees. So we saw that down. Now, Windsor kind of escaped it. The highest winds you had, I think, were about 64 kilometers per hour. We had winds of over 120 in parts of, in the Toronto area and Kitchener, Waterloo. But um, it really came through Sarnia and went up the 401. I mean, my gosh, it targeted every major city except Windsor, Ottawa, Montreal, Quebec City. And it was, to me, the big, big story. Yeah, absolutely. David Phillips uh, from Environment Canada joining us here on AM 800. Mike Kaycook and Lisa Williams with you. Happy holidays. Hope you're enjoying your time off. And, you know, David, when you talk about, you know, the the, the winds and, uh, you know, the disaster we had out east, it seems like, you know, overall, even, you know, topping the weather in, in looking at the entire news cycle from this year, extreme weather was a big story in itself. Oh, I think so, Mike. I mean, we talk, I think really last year, it was really about too little weather. We had that heat wave, we had fires, we had um, searing drought. And if we had more weather, it would have made it less impactful. Well, this year, it was all about the weather. It was about the hurricanes, about the wild windstorms. It was about flooding rains on the prairies. Uh, it just seemed to be too much weather. And, you know, we like that balance in life, and I think we need that balance in weather. You know, some years you get too much weather, some years too little. We want that Goldilocks of weather, and certainly the last two years have not been that way. So I think you're right. I think that certainly the number of storms, particularly out west, and even as we end the year, we're seeing storms bearing down in, in parts of um, uh, of Ontario, and we're into some lake effect snow, and out west, they've had some really cold conditions, better now, but hey, so I think that uh, weather never takes a break in Canada. There's no sort of boring. Uh, I think uh, that's, I think, the other aspect of Canadian uh, life is that weather's important to us, always has been, and and yep. it's never it's never dull. There's never reruns <laughs> with regards to, to, yeah. to weather. <laughs> So when we talk about extremes, um, mm -hmm. like we've had, you know, last year, uh, how much of this is is connected to climate change? And those who are uh, non-believers of climate change would say, well, this is a cyclical thing. You know, you look back in history, these kinds of things have happened before. It's just part of the way, you know, Earth sort of moves and uh, is it is it here to stay? Are we going to see these extremes moving forward every year, do you think? Well, Lisa, that's a very good question. It's, it's a penetrating kind of question because it's you can't it, it's not as if it's like uh, green, uh, green weather for people and, you know, red weather for nature. I always think that what is different for me is I think that what we have seen, I, I think there's every piece of weather on this planet is has a human component to it. You know, 100 years ago. It was only about the sun. It was only about the oceans, volcanism. It was about the sun and Earth's uh, geometry that caused the weather. But what we've seen is that there's no, whether it be a garden variety thunderstorm or a massive killer heat wave, it has a human component to it. Now, guys, it may just be infinitesimal. It may be non-measurable. You can't attribute it. It's not coming out of our tailpipes and smokestacks, obviously. But I think that we are also an agent of change as people. We, we compete with nature. And in some cases, we know this because scientists have shown it convincingly that there are some events that you can clearly say was, was caused by, wouldn't have been that way if it hadn't been for, for human anthropogenic warming. So I think it comes down to the fact, except that everything is uh, because of, of humans and nature, and it's just that how much of one is, is responsible for that event and, and that. So I think we sort of got caught up, guys, in this idea as well. Is it climate change or isn't it? It's both. It's nature and human beings that are contributing to this. The only difference is some events like heat waves are clearly would not have happened if it hadn't been for human beings. But other events like a cold wave or a, a, a particular tornado 
I mean, hey, that could have very well just been nature being its ornery self. Mm. David Phillips from Environment Canada joining us here on AM 800, talking the weather from from 2022. And, uh, you know, it, it is, I think, David, you said uh, the best thing that, you know, we all have this in common. It's something we all talk about. We're all interested in. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I noticed in, in, you know, talking about the weather and the extremes and things like that, how many billions of dollars the weather can cost different countries, different areas, and the damage that it causes. Oh, Mike, you're so right. And that's really changed. What we have seen is, and, and because people are where we live and what we do, um, when we have these big, big hits or big ticket items, uh, uh, and when insurance numbers, they're, they're clearly prove that. Uh, uh, what we've seen, let me give you one statistic. There's this thing called the federal government insurance uh, or uh, sort of a, a crisis plan where they if a city is hit with either uh, some kind of disaster they help to pay that pay out for that to help that community recover well they have paid out more for weather and water in the last six years than they paid out for the previous 39 years mm. so it is something that's very different now we own more property we have more things do you say like the basement i lived in in in, or in my home in windsor it was a smelly old place. I just sort of my bike down there. Like, you see, now people have, have, you know, uh, uh, fitness centers, they have rec rooms and, and these things. So when you have a flood, boy, it's a big ticket item as opposed to just being a uh, nuisance or an inconvenience. When we, when we talk about predicting uh, weather, weather events, or just your everyday forecast, that kind of thing, uh, it's always been a difficult thing, I would imagine. It, nothing's 100%. Weather, very difficult to to predict, can change you know, rapidly. Um, but how are we doing with technology and, and getting better at not only your everyday forecast, but in, in predicting you know, disastrous type weather events that could really harm people? You know, I think in some ways, Lisa, it's made it difficult in terms of whether it's going to be a disaster or not, because sometimes it's not just the weather, it's the human component that can certainly make that. I mean, Canadians, we really get fewer disasters than around the world, fewer deaths uh, from, um, from, I mean, more people die falling out of bed than die from weather in Canada. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know? I mean, it, and it's not because we are a safe or a safe haven is that we're well-educated, we're respectful of weather. I think that's very, very important. I mean, people in Windsor know what to do when there's a tornado warning. I mean, come on, people in other parts of the world would take pictures of it or look at it, you know, yeah. and then and then wonder why they were a, a casualty from that. So I, I certainly think that what we're seeing uh, uh, is the fact that weather on a day-by-day -day basis is becoming more accurate. And, and Lisa, you're right. It's all the technology, the satellites and the supercomputers and the, the automatic weather stations and, and, and all of this, the radars that we can figure it out. Now, it still is slow. It's never going to be, there'll always be jobs for weather people because you know we, we, get, we improve it by one day every 10 years. So the seven day forecast now, as accurate was the six day forecast was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's slow. There's yeah. no kind of almost eureka, here's the answer, because it's figuring out a chaotic kind of environment and trying to figure out. People's expectations for weather have increased. I remember in Windsor, people would say, well, is it gonna rain in, uh, in, in you know, in Windsor tomorrow. And now they want to know, is it going to rain in Riverside or, or La Salle? And is it going to start at two o'clock? When's it going to end? And how much are we going to get? So our expectations <laughs> of weather people have increased dramatically. And so I think that always keeps uh, people um, on their toes. It's, it's our motivation for always doing a good job because we know that people depend on us, you know, mm -hmm. and we try to deliver. And we often give you, people criticize, they say, well, you're telling us about this storm 10 days before it arrives. We're worried that we're just, why, why you know, totally to worn out by it, you see, that fatigue of a storm and it hasn't even arrived. But you know, you do that. You don't want to hold the information. You want to give people a heads up to be able to do something about it. Absolutely. David Phillips from Environment Canada joining us here on AM 800. Mike and Lisa with you. Um, you know, and, and David, you talk about uh, all the technology we have now to predict uh, different storms and how far out we can predict uh, different events that are coming our way. 
Have you ever done a comparison? Because you've been doing this a long time. The old school way versus <laughs> technology and what wins? Oh, uh, listen, guys, I wouldn't even I, I think that's an answer, easy answer. I mean, it's just it, it's I would rather have all these these bells and whistles than the old days where they had chalk and they threw it in the air, like you say, <laughs> inside. Well, I mean, those little kinds of symbols that kind of, of, of uh, lit up and, and that, you know, I mean, no, no, I think we can, we can get it. And you know why we can get it better is because we monitor the oceans better. Yeah. The oceans don't, can't burp without us knowing about it. Right. We have satellites in the sky that can take any kind, you know, it used to be did a hurricane hit. Well, you didn't know unless it sank a ship or made landfall. Sometimes they were out there in the ocean, didn't even know about it. But no kind of little disturbance can be avoided on planet Earth now because we see it coming. We can track it. The models are not always perfect, but um, they give really people a heads up more than they ever have. I think people are safer now in Canada than they ever have been from the weather. Even though the weather is getting more turbulent and chaotic, I think the information we have to prepare for it is far better now than it ever has been. If you uh, and maybe you have had the opportunity to live in, in in a climate where, you know, there are there are not four seasons, <laughs> would you take it or do you prefer a four season kind of uh, climate like Canada? Well, Lisa, I would find I would run out of things to talk about if I live there in the, the wet season and the dry season. Come on, you could set your watch to it. I mean, people you go to the Caribbean and they say, well, I'll meet you uh, at, at 445. Well, it's, it, they just know, and what they'll say, though, is I'll meet you after the rain, because they know it, that's yeah. going to be 445. It's so predictable. How boring is that? Yeah. You know, I, I, I think I've often said that I wouldn't want to have perfect forecasts for Canada. I would always want some uncertainty. It would take the fun out of being Canadian if you yes. knew what was going to happen, do you see? <laughs> and of course, we, we wear more clothes than any other people. We buy more clothes than any other people in the world. And guys, it's not that we're fashion conscious, is that we need a lot of weather because of the seasons that we have in this country. I agree. Yeah, I agree. that's a good point. Uh, what do you think of the Farmer's Almanac? I always uh, <laughs> am very interested when the Farmer's Almanac comes out to predict the weather for the winter, the summer, or whatever it is. How accurate is that Farmer's Almanac? Lisa, who invited that guy? <laughs> I, you know, I, gotta ask the I have to work with David. him every day. Yeah. Every Jeez. day, David. <laughs> what a challenge, Lisa. I mean, come on. That's a swear word for that. But you know, Mike, I get the farmers on like every year. People said it to me. And I like it. I like it for the recipes, the homespun wisdom that has, the little sayings. It's very entertaining. But I don't believe for a moment of the forecast and only because i mean they could get it right just by flipping a coin or throwing the dart i mean we're not always right and they could be right but i think they do it it's sort of like science fiction than, yeah. than science you say because it, one of the things they have to do is come up with a forecast like a year in advance to meet the publication dates you say <laughs> and then they'll say okay uh you look at it in windsor or in southern or between chicago and montreal between christmas and new year's it's going to snow Oh, good choice, do you see? I mean, the chances of it snowing are pretty high up there, do you see? Yeah. See, they're smart. They don't call for a, a, a hurricane in January in, in Tilbury, for example. They'll, they'll, they they got it, the climate right kind of thing. But, hey, I, I think it's a, a, bit, um, a bit ludicrous. But the thing that really bothers me about them is that they claim they're 80% right. right. And they're doing the marking. I mean, it's like taking a take-home test, you see. I mean, who's telling them, we scored it, and they're, they're no better than flipping a coin. You and I could come up with a scheme that could beat theirs just by the law of averages. So I don't think there's any skill in it, but, um, hey, it's uh, it's something that's always been, and, hey, they've been doing it for 250 years. they got a lot more experience than we yeah. have. Yeah. So take it uh, for what it is and it's enjoy the entertainment. Yes. Exactly, Mike. That's it. It's uh, it, And, you know, that little... A hole that they punch in the, in the corner yeah. it's because that allowed it to hang in the outhouse uh there was a hook on the wall so it was good reading material for <laughs> activity <laughs> we learned so much with you david yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well listen thanks for your time today okay. uh thanks for all you do for us canadians uh, all year, every year, keeping us informed. We really appreciate it. And have have yourself a great, uh, well, rest of the holiday season. And we'll talk to you again in 2023. 
Gee, guys, I already look forward to that moment that that'll happen. Thank you so much for inviting me with you today. Bye-bye. David Phillips from Environment Canada joining us here on AM800.